Good morning everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, so this morning we uh, moved up to uh, my grandma's place here just up on the uh, north edge of Knox and uh, we farm about uh, 30 acres up here. So uh, I'm getting fuel put in a gleaner. We had change of spring that holds the in row divider up on the 1020 head on the 1660. And now I'm working on getting a gleaner ready. I want to show you something real quick. Coming to mail yesterday. I'm pretty damn excited about it. Uh, Gear Wrench was selling these tool kits on Amazon. Uh, half inch, three eighths, and quarter inch drive. Uh, inch and a half all the way down to seven sixteenths and half inch drive. From 15 all the way up to uh, 27 and a half inch drive. Uh, wrenches from 3 quarter all the way to uh, 7 16 then from a, uh, 10 millimeter all the way up to uh, 19. Uh, all your 3 8 quarter inch drive, you got Allen wrenches with it. You got a nice uh, screwdriver nut driver. Uh, screwdriver Phillips bit, straight bits. Pretty nice set for $179 on Amazon. I caught it on the Amazon Prime Days. Awesome set. So, figured I'd share that with you. If you want one, get on Amazon and get you one. Uh, it's going to be a great set to carry in my truck. I carry most of the stuff in my truck already, but I thought it'd be nice to have it all in one box. I can grab it and carry it somewhere or whatever I want to do with it so but uh anyways we're gonna get our fuel I gotta put some antifreeze in it and then uh, we're gonna head out to the field and do some cutting and we're gonna try to get this done and then uh, we have another uh, 52 acres that we're gonna get done today and that concludes all of our soybeans up north of Knox and we're gonna be heading back south uh, we got some uh, got about oh 400 acres of soybeans left roughly and then we're done with beans and then we'll move on to corn. So uh, next week, sometime, I'll be getting the uh, 2013 S78 to try out. I'm pretty excited about that combine. Did I say 78? Yeah, 78. Or 70. No, S76. I'm sorry. It's coming next week. So I'm going to be trying out a newer gleaner. It's not brand new, but it's a newer gleaner. So I'm pretty excited about that. It's got a 30 foot head on it. So. We'll cut some beans with that and see how we like a newer gleaner. So, I'm going to get the semi moved. Dad's going to cut me a place to park the semi down there at the end of the field. And uh, then I'm going to come back, get my combine, and start cutting. So, thanks for watching so far. Well, the gleaner was a little low on coolant, and all I had was some straight antifreeze. So, I ran up here to Grandma's house, and I hope her and Grandpa don't mind that I steal a little bit of tap water. So... Oh yeah, don't judge me. I'm putting tap water in the old gleaner. I know you should be using uh, distilled water. Oh, you're going to rust your sleeves. Oh, piss. I run a good conditioner in it. Don't, don't freak out. I run conditioner in it. We're not going to rust the sleeves. It's not going to get... Oh, what's the word for it? I can't even remember. But anyways, I've never actually had an engine that had a failure because of rusted cylinder walls so we're gonna get some water and we're gonna get back to cutting beans I should verify that I am going to be mixing the antifreeze 50 50 so uh, I didn't want you to think I'm putting straight water in the old gleaner it will be mixed 50 50 so we're gonna get down there dad's gonna start cutting we had to change a hose and he's gonna start cutting got the gleaner all ready and just got to uh, unload the hopper um, I had to put the semi in a better spot to unload in. I actually, I have beans on the combine right now from the previous farm, and we have to keep them separate from this farm for uh, insurance or crop insurance reasons. So uh, we're going to actually do a split hopper. Uh, the front compartment of the trailer will be from one farm, and then the back hopper will all be from this farm. So we'll have to drive through the elevator twice to unload it's kind of a pain but it keeps everything straight for insurance purposes so we have a paper trail on everything and uh, keep all the grain tickets separate so I'll get my auger out here 
Everybody makes fun of these old cleaner augers because they come out straight. It's coming. It, oh, there it is. But the nice thing about it is you can bring it right down to the trailer like this. That way you have no nothing splatters. There's not much in here, so it won't take very long. See, I told you there wasn't much in there, but you gotta keep every little bit separate, so. So now we'll watch the auger leave, and there it goes. So, uh, we're gonna get cutting now. Uh, everything looks good, everything's dry, so I'm gonna get started. Well, we're on the move to the next farm. You can't see it, but way over there is my cousin's picking with her big Kloss combine with 16 row head on it. Uh, maybe later, if uh, we can get over that way, we'll get a video of them picking with it. But it's a big combine. 16 rows at a time, that, that's a lot of corn. Um, so uh, we're in the 1660 now. I'm gonna use it to cut in because this farm has a fence around it and there's no good way to put my head on and get in through the gate. So uh, I'm gonna get in there with the 20 foot head, cut me a spot, and then uh, we'll get the uh, gleaner in there and get the 25 foot head put back on it and then we'll continue cutting beans today. So kind of just one of them deals, it's kind of gonna be a bear. So I got a truck coming up here, I'm gonna have to figure out where I'm gonna get off the road because there's no good spots to get off. Uh, usually the 25 or 20 foot head this isn't a problem but this is a narrow road so I have to get around this truck real quick. We made it to the field now. We're going to cut these ends off real quick so we can get the uh, semi in here when uh, dad gets back and uh, get the uh, head for the gleaner in here. Uh, once we get the head in here and all that uh, Dad strength is going to run me back for the gleaner. I'll get it over here and uh, we'll get the head put on it and then we'll uh, start cutting with it. Get some beans cut. So, we've got this whole place to get cut. Hopefully, we can get most of it done today. We'll see what happens. Should be able to get it all done if everything goes right and everything runs smooth. So, uh, I'm going to get at least 60 foot of these ends cut off and then. Uh, We'll go get the cleaner. We're back in the old cleaner now. Uh, we got, we're working on getting the field all broke in. I've got uh, two passes around the outside. Got away from the woods. I figured better get, out, get away from the woods before I start videoing. So if there's uh, a tree limb or something, I can uh, have both hands on the controls. But once I'm away from there, it's smooth sailing. The, the header control works really good on this. I uh, actually took the header control off of the gleaner head and put it on the IH head. Uh, Dad strength and I and came up with the geometry for the linkage that we needed to make the header, header control work with the micro switches. It is now mounted on the end of the head out there and the side panel covers it up beautifully. I will say these are some of the dustiest soybeans that I have cut ever. I don't know why they're so dusty, but they are extremely dusty today. I am, I'm gonna have to look and see what variety these were. Um, I don't think we've actually cut this variety yet. I know it is a Bex variety, but I don't have my iPad with me for my notes to see what I got planted out here. And I can't remember. But uh, they are dusty, very dusty. But uh, they seem to be good beans though, real good beans. I'll raise my reel up a little bit, kind of get, get a little too deep in them. But uh, they definitely are dry. They're running right through, no problems. But just very dusty. So uh, I'm gonna keep cutting what we can get done. Uh, this field might have a little bit of a curse on it. This is uh, the field that this spring when I was planting it, the uh, 
the one gear and the engine oil pump on the 4955, our John Deere 4955, the, uh, the gear and the oil pump spun on the shaft and it lost engine oil pressure. And luckily, I was looking down at the dash just as the stoplight come on and the oil pressure light come on, I pushed the clutch in, jerked the fuel stop out real quick and killed it. And luckily there was no injury to that engine at all. So uh, we brought the semi out to the field. If you watch the video on that, I can't remember what I called it exactly. I think it's like Deer Down or something, John Deere 4955 engine oil pump. Uh, on that video, you'll see how we brought the semi out to the field, drug it up on the trailer, and took it home and uh, put a new oil pump in it. Um, but yeah, luckily, when we pulled the uh, rod bearing and main bearing caps off, everything looked perfect. So uh, luckily, I did not injure that motor at all. Got her shut down on time. And in fact, there was still oil in the crankshaft when we uh, pulled the... Uh, the main cap off so uh, she had plenty of oil down there I was just really worried about the turbo you know because the turbo was spinning so fast when I shut it off and cut the oil off to it right away but uh, I mean I'd rather junk the turbo than lose the motor so um, but luckily everything was fine um, just simple fact of uh, putting an engine oil pump in it putting her back together and uh, I took it out and I done some discing with it uh, after that and uh, everything was fine. So uh, we're going to put it on the grain cart this uh, this fall. Well, in fact, it's hooked to the grain cart right now. We just have to finish checking the cart over. Uh, we mainly use the cart and corn because uh, soybeans, are just they don't, there's just not enough of them to really use the cart. So. Uh, as soon as we start picking corn, we'll get the grain cart to 4955 out in the field and you'll get to see that. That's uh, Dad's strength's job in the fall is he runs a grain cart and does a damn good job at it. So, uh, anyways, hopefully you're enjoying this video so far. Uh, we're going to try and knock this uh, farm out yet tonight. We'll see what happens. Uh, Dad's strength's phone said that it was supposed to be raining in 20 minutes. But, uh, ooh, big old water stuff. But, uh, that rain must have passed. So, hopefully it won't rain at all. So, anyways, thanks for watching so far. So, I was cutting along down on the other end, and, uh, my sickle stopped all of a sudden. And, like, why'd my sickle stop? Brand new sickle, there's no grass, no nothing. So, I hit the head switch really quick, shut the head off, and got out. And wouldn't you know it, piece of steel round bar, round rod, big wire, whatever you want to call it, got right in between a new sickle and a guard, and stopped her dead. <sighs> Took a big chip out of one of my new sickles, or new sections. So I had to take pry bar and work the uh, sickle back the other direction. And I got her out. So now I'm going to unload and cut some more yet because we still got an empty trailer. So this will be my first dump. 200 bushels is what the old L2 holds. The 1660 holds uh, 200 also if you're wondering. So uh, every time we both unload it's 200 bushel. Takes about 500 bushel to fill a compartment in the trailer. There's two compartments so you get about Oh, you can get about a uh, legal load, 1,000 bushel on these trailers. Well, I guess it depends on test weight and moisture and all that as to if it's, if it's a legal load. But uh, we're allowed 80,000. So, but, and we, we really don't overload these trailers because these are, these are from the early 90s and we just take it easy on them. You know, we don't want to destroy them. They're, uh, they're older trailers. We try to uh, do our best to not pull them through uh, road ditches and stuff like that loaded. We always try to uh, find a good, nice spot to pull in off the road, just so we're not twisting the trailers or hurting anything on them. 
So I'm empty now, so I'm gonna go back to cut. So got my auger. There it is. Gotta wait for the bang because my uh, auger in light don't work. So I need to fix that one of these days. That uh, the cradle that the auger sits in when the wheel bearing went out on the other side and the axle kicked up, it kind of bent the cradle up a little bit. And when the auger sits down, the uh, switch don't quite hit the auger. So that's one thing I need to fix yet. And that was from last time the wheel bearing went out. And the funny thing is, is it popped up in my memories on Facebook that one day ago, or no, it would have popped up yesterday, not yesterday, but the day before was the day that the other side wheel bearings went out and we fixed it. So we were shy one day of being on the same day of fixing the wheel bearings on the gleaner. That's kind of cool. I know it's unfortunate that it happened, but it's kind of cool that it happened so close together, you know, the next year. So, okay, enough of me rattling on. I'm going to get back to cutting beans. We're going to see if we can get this knocked out. The rain looks like it could be coming. I'm not sure. So we're just going to keep hammer down until the rain comes and we'll see what happens after that. So if it rains, we'll head back to the shop and we'll be working on the Tempty Super Hopper, uh, the other trailer. It's identical to the one that we got out here in the field. Uh, we're going to finish uh, getting them doors done and uh, get a video done on them doors and how to fix your doors. So I'm going to get back at it. I guess another fun fact I can add to this video is uh, the field that we're in used to be farmed by the gleaner's original owner. So uh, this combine is basically back in its home territory. So I guess we could call this video The Gleaner Goes Home. So uh, yeah, it uh, spent a lot of its life uh, harvesting in this field actually. So uh, that's pretty cool to think about. Um, I actually bought The Gleaner on the original owner's auction. I uh, gave 1500 bucks for the combine. Everybody wrote it off as dead. The day of the sale, it was non-running. Uh, the next day I went, took some fresh fuel, fresh filters, fresh battery, and uh, blew all the fuel lines out. And within about a half hour, we had it running, and I drove it home. So, uh, been using it ever since. Never really intended to actually use it. I uh, bought it for the drive tires because they were fairly new and they would go on our 1660. So uh, I thought, well, I was standing there and the bid was uh, like, I don't know what it was, but I jumped it to 1500. And the next thing you know, they yelled sold. I was like, sweet. So I bought it basically for the, uh, the tires and the engine. Well, been using it ever since. Took it home, started tinkering with it, and uh, got it running and fixed the header control and stuff. And ran it for a while with the cleaner head on it, then I put the Case IH head on it, the 1020, and it's been great ever since. So uh, we're just about done with this field, so I think I'm going to wrap this video up because there ain't going to be much more excitement. So anyways, if you like this episode of Beer Green Steel, give me a like and subscribe. Subscribe. I can't talk tonight, I'm pretty tired. Uh, but uh, the sun is just about out of sight. But uh, go ahead and give me a like and subscribe. And uh, for more awesome videos, and we got more awesomeness coming up. So uh, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. So I think we're gonna hit a thousand subscribers this weekend. I'm pretty excited about that. So uh, there's dad coming over there. So anyways, I will see you guys on the next one. Guys and girls, thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate it.